All right. Good morning, Hop Hog High School community. It is wonderful to see everybody here. Got a good group of people here today from the high school art department ready to share a lot of their thinking about art. What's up, everybody? We'll get back to you in just a second. It is Wednesday, May 6th. Wait, is that right? Yes, it's Wednesday, right? May 6th. Great. It is our 55th day away from students here today. Uh, Cuomo has communicated very clearly you know it's gonna go on a lot longer than that in some at the end of the year we will be away from students 106 days when all said and done but we're about halfway there in terms of the virtual experience or a little bit more than halfway there um listen you know somber days after somber days after somber days here and so just worthwhile for us to take a moment and just recognize like some heavy stuff going on we are increasingly and continuously impressed with how the people of Hop Hog are responding here um people are putting in solid efforts in a myriad of ways whether that's uh parents and family members being frontline workers whether it's our students who are working extra shifts at the grocery stores whatever it is uh, keep on with the fight. And um, if you're experiencing personal loss in whether it's through the form of a loss of a loved one or through uh, the loss of um, economic uh, streams coming into to your family, we, we understand that there's challenges. Don't hesitate to reach out. As always, we are here and ready to respond. Uh, all right, without further ado, let's have people come on and say hello. We'll start uh, Alpha first name. You just come on, say hello. We'll go start with Beth. Hey guys, it's Mrs. Lavelle. How's everyone doing? Good stuff, Dave. Good morning, Hop Hog. How's everybody? Jen. Morning, Mrs. Clark. J Dubs. Good morning, Hop Hog. Happy Wednesday. Cool, Joy. Yep. Good morning, Hop Hog. It's great to be with you this morning. Happy Wednesday. Cool, Christy. Good morning, Hop Hog. Hope you're all doing well. We miss you. Maria. Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's feeling well. Thank you, Megan. Hey, good morning, Hop Hog. Happy Wednesday. Cool, Patty. Good morning, Hop Hog. Hope everybody's doing well. We miss you. All right, so we got some new faces on here. I should have mentioned this earlier. I didn't in our prep session, but we're going to go ahead and do the old uh, breakfast order at a deli situation. So you can really it does be a, you're going to have to put in your favorite breakfast order at your favorite spot. If you want to tell us what spot it is, that's great. Um, I think uh, right now, and then we'll just go in order. So, oh, and remember, of course, of course, in New York, if you get in line in the breakfast place and you get to the counter and it's your turn and turn and you're not ready then everybody in the place hates you so just be ready to go and, and express what you got going on so strathmore bagels i'll get three eggs uh turkey and cheese salt pepper ketchup on a today we'll do everything bagel beth go for it. what's your breakfast order um what is the uh, the bowl place you know the oh god forget the name of the bowl place but anyway um, the acai bowl with uh, pataya and nice. extra almond butter. There you go. There you go, Dave. Uh, scrambled eggs, cheese, ketchup on a roll or a bagel. Ketchup, good choice. <laughs> uh, Dan. Uh, I'm boring. Poppy seed bagel with cream cheese. Plain and simple. Easy, easy peasy. J Dubs. Still B E C S P K. Today I'm going to do a bagel. There you go. Enjoy. <laughs> Tuna on an egg everything bagel from Bagel Chalet. Yeah, yeah. Christy. Uh, everything bagel, lightly toasted, lightly buttered from Boulevard Bagels. Cool. Maria. Uh, poached egg with asparagus. Cool. Megan. Wow. I'm bringing back to basics. McDonald's egg McMuffin. Wow. Egg. Yep. <laughs> Wow, and, and you're a local person too. Like you grew up around here and you, you go to McDonald's. That's amazing. Yeah, Strathmore is good, but I love a McGriddle. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Patty, go for it. Um, like Joe, a BEC, SPK on a roll, but not a bagel. <laughs> That's amazing. I love it. 
<laughs> I love it. I got some stories I could tell about being in Boston when I was first got there about just realizing, oh, not everybody has good egg sandwiches. This is terrible. And then Dunkin' Donuts is your best egg sandwich. It's brutal. Um, all right. Perspective, I guess. So listen, the question here for today, we got a few of them. Um, and we're interested in kind of diving deeper a little bit with people. And so the question is, like, who is the most significant artist or um, uh, a film creator or producer of any kind that's had like the most impact on you as a person now in the past, just somebody that comes to mind, like who's somebody significant in the art space uh, that has influenced you. My APs, uh, hopefully you got somebody good. Love it, Jake. Uh, Beth, jump on in. Who's the most significant artist that jumps to mind to you and why? Um, I, I would think artists, a personal artist would be, um Berenbach. She was my mentor. She was an educator here for many years, and uh, she really influenced me in the classroom and with the kids. But then a fine artist is an architect that I like to follow is Frank Geary, who designed the Bilbao Museum in, um, in, in Spain. Well, I really like him a lot, too. Oh, cool. very good. Uh, Dave, why don't we take it? You can take an artist if you got somebody or like a, a uh, you know, a director or somebody, anybody that jumps to mind, you take it away. Sure. Um, I mean, Mrs. Coppola took me on a, uh, a field trip once to MoMA and, yeah. um, there were a lot of inspiring, a lot of inspiring artists there. Um, but I'm going to kind of go a different route because, um, <laughs> Mrs. Coppola knows what I'm talking about. They were very, some very abstract. Yeah. I imagine. Them, but, I imagine you know. I get um, but I would say I would have to go with Martin Scorsese. Um, because when I started teaching film um, courses years ago, um, I kind of leaned towards a documentary that he had. Um, and it's like three hours of where he just kind of dissects film and what he does. And he really talks deep about his production skills and how he works with um, people and how he has an editor that just kind of is side by side with him um, all the time with his films. And just to see his creative process, it's just uh, fascinating. So. Um, I share a lot of that stuff with my students. Cool. Jen, go for it. Um, my favorite artist is Jackson Pollock. I love his energy. When I was teaching elementary school, um, that was one of the projects we did. It was the messiest project, but we had the most fun. In fact, I actually named my first son Jackson after Jackson mm -hmm. Pollock. It's spelled different, but that's where he got mm -hmm. it from. So, Very yeah, cool. he's my favorite. Very cool. <laughs> Pollock is a Hamptons. He, he did most of his artwork in the Hamptons, right? Is that, am I making that up? Yes, me and Miss Lavelle went on a field trip there to his studio last year. Amazing, amazing. So his workspace, his floor was a mess, covered in paint. It was great. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, J Dubs, what do you got? Give me something deep, Joe. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, you know, my mind initially went to um, to Van Gogh just because uh, my favorite museum in the world is in Amsterdam, the Van Gogh Museum. And so that's where my mind went. But then as I'm saying it, I'm remembering our conversation from a couple of weeks ago where anyone can be an artist. So my my um, my thought here might change as we go through this. So, uh, but that was where my mind went initially. I wanted to ask Dave, did you say you, your favorite art was at Mohunk? Upstate? MoMA. The MoMA. MoMA. Get hit, mm -hmm. Joe. Museum Mo of Modern Art. It was being yelled at by the baby. So I, I heard Mohunk. No, next time Mrs. Capolo goes on a trip, you should join her. It's great. I love it. Please. Yeah. I've been there, but I'll definitely go again. Is there good art at Mohawk, Joe? <laughs> there is. Yeah. There's art everywhere. Art is in everything, Chris. Yes, I'm glad we I'm glad you're holding on to those concepts from a couple weeks ago. That's good. Joy, go for it. This is hysterical. So I definitely um love any of the seascapes uh artists, especially I think the first name is Child, but last name Hassam. Um, I also, uh, really appreciate Monet. Cool. Christy. Hi. So, um, there is an, actually, it's a graffiti artist. His name is Eric Wall. He serves as a keynote speaker at something that I saw. He was really, um, inspirational. He put, turned on a song and played a song and used, um, a brush and painted while the, the song was going on. And by the time the song was over, he had a full blown um, uh, drawing. And the first one that he did was um, 
Einstein and he actually painted it upside down. And at the end when the song was over, he turned it over and it was Einstein. So it was really pretty cool. Um, but also I would have to say like the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo for the more traditional. Cool. Uh, Maria. Uh, I'm thinking. I'll let okay. you know. All right. Megan. Okay. Um, I've said it before. I really uh, love Ivan Earl. Um, he was a Disney illustrator and he was completely responsible for the styling and the graphic design of Disney's Sleeping Beauty, um, which really took more than like 10 years to make. Um, but he also worked on Peter Pan and Lady and the Tramp. And I just feel like you don't see uh, animated films like that anymore. So um, it's like this golden age of Disney and like I, I've tried to kind of mimic his work, but I just can't. I find myself just looking at it more. Um, but he's a local boy too. He was born in Manhattan. Um, and he had like, his, he went to France. He showed work at like in his early teens. So he's pretty, pretty amazing artist. And I like that he's like local. So. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Patty. Um, <clears throat> originally I would say always a uh, Renaissance artist uh, being in Italy, seeing the Sistine Chapel and all their beautiful work was amazing. But um, when I saw the work of Henri Mat Matisse, he's a, a fab artist, and his use of color and abstraction, I just loved it. It just um, didn't think I could do something like that or everything had to be traditional, but seeing his work made me uh, follow a new path of color. Oh, that's awesome, that's awesome. All right, in a second, I think we are gonna jump to um, uh, to our correspondents for their daily update. However, before then, um, Maria, as we were going through in our conversation just before uh, we got going here about some, some music made me think of a particular painting. So I'm gonna present for like 10 seconds because I think it captures the idea that you were uh, alluding to that you can't, you can't always go back to the past experience being as glor glory as, uh, as filled with glory as, as we thought maybe they were. And so uh, it jumped to mind, The Persistence of Memory, I think by Dolly. But um, anyway, this painting, The Persistence of Memory, and to me, this this has been an important painting, something I've uh, gone back to, just like time has this weird, uh, malleable sense, and you just can't really know exactly what's happening uh, in the past and the persistence of memory and how our, our memories become uh, clouded with time. So there's my uh, depth for the day. Hopefully that uh, resonated with you a little bit. Um, all right, so now well, let's get to our correspondence for the day. Uh, we are in search. This is kind of like a broad interview for an art correspondent. Yesterday or uh, earlier in the week, we had different people from the art department or the fine performing arts department. We haven't decided on who our formal arts correspondent is gonna be. So just know that the, uh, the job posting is out there. Joe, take us away with sports. Sorry for the delay. Had a little trouble unmuting myself. Today's Jort Report, uh, still don't have sponsors, but um, you know, throw them at us if you have anyone that you'd like sponsored on our reports here. Uh, what happened in sports? Really nothing. Still nothing really going on. But if you, um, again, Korean baseball is often underway with no fans. It's interesting to watch. It's actually on right now. On ESPN and ESPN2, they'll be airing some games, I think six a week. Um, Fun fact about uh, Korean baseball teams, they're all named after companies, not the locations yeah. they play in. So today I was watching the Doosan Tigers, which was interesting. Anyway, um, also uh, for football news, New York Jets fans, they signed Frank Gore, who, uh, yes, the same Frank Gore that uh, has been playing basically since 2006. So the Jets are um, you know, just adding pieces arbitrarily as they always do. Um, nothing really on tonight unless, um, you know, so watch something else besides sports because there's not really anything going on tonight. Uh, Joe, um, fun trivia. Huh? Uh, I think we have a fun trivia question for you. Oh, yeah, I'm getting there. No, no, we have one for you. Oh, actually, you I actually have two now after <laughs> looking at Joe. Okay. Uh, you want to throw that at me first or do you want sure. me to throw my... Go I'll, ahead. Throw, I'll throw the trivia. Who was... All right, Patty. Which famous baseball player was born today in 1931? Is it Willie Mays? Yep. <laughs> oh my God. <guy>, yeah. <laughs> and today in 2004, which famous uh, 
sitcom sh had their last episode? In 2004? Mm-hmm. Friends. I was going to say Friends, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. I thought it was earlier than 2004, though. No, we, we did our homework, Joe. Okay. I'm, I'm sure you did. I know you did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Patty, who was your favorite Friends character? Just have to ask. <laughs> uh, I liked uh, Monica. Okay. <laughs> Respect that you I are Monica. That's, <laughs> so Monica. that's so figures. <laughs> that's perfect. I do think that's a good question for the for the round. If you wanted to, but you could also save that one. But I think that's a good one. I think that is a good one. It's a good way to test people's character. You know. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, Joe, what Frank Gore on the all-time rushing list? Where does he? Oh yes. It? So that was going to be actually my trivia question: Is Frank Gore is third right now? Yeah. With fifteen thousand three hundred forty-seven yards, can you name the top two? I can because I'm looking at the li the, the list, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's see if somebody else can. And can anyone want to take a shot? I would have gotten the first one, not the second one. Yeah. So the first one, any Cowboys fans out there? Emmett Smith is number one with eighteen thousand three hundred fifty-five yards. Second is Walter Payton. 16,726. If I were, if I didn't look at the list ahead of time, I probably would have guessed who's fourth place as number two. It's Barry Sanders. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Um, and surprisingly, number five is Adrian Peterson, also still fairly active. And number six, of course, is Curtis Martin, former Jet. Great. You have our two Soon enough, you'll have two former Jets on that list. Well, they got to play well, a game, who, I guess. Frank Gore. Well, now we'll we'll he'll, he'll be a former Jet soon enough. Yes, yes. you're correct. Um, all right. So, Joy, history. So today is National Beverage Day. Whether you enjoy a beverage hot or whether you enjoy a beverage cold, today is National Beverage Day. Um, today is uh, two prong. National Nurses Day. So it's mm -hmm. National Nurses Day and it's also National School Nurses Day. So we want to salute all our frontline workers. We want to uh, recognize all of the nurses who are out there in the hospitals and nursing homes and rehab centers. Um, appreciate all you're doing. And we absolutely want to salute all of our school nurses Thank you each and every day when you're in the building. And even um, during the distance learning right now, we know that you're very busy helping families. Uh, today is also National Skilled Trades Day. It is actually National Crepe Suzette Day. And um, it is National Ride a Bike Day. National Ride so, a Bike Day. All right. Yeah. So get out there and ride a bike before the weather changes. And speaking of weather, Ms. Pagliari, take it away. Thanks, Ms. Farrar. So I, I feel awkward reporting weather when there's only like a 30% accuracy to it. So today <laughs> it's going to be cloudy in the morning. So don't yell at me if I'm wrong. Uh, it's going to be cloudy in the morning, um, like 50 degrees, pretty cold and chilly out. And then by 2 o'clock, there's a 30% chance of rain for the rest of the day. So hopefully our kids will get up a little earlier before 12 today so they can get a chance to get outside uh, before it rains. It's going to rain all night, 50% accuracy. And, uh, but tomorrow's going to be sunny, so we have something to look forward to. Beautiful. Maria, what is for dinner? Well, actually, um, Chrissy just complicated things. Uh -oh. I mean, for dinner, for dinner, I um, making a turkey breast. I had a turkey breast in the freezer. And actually, I said to my husband, I'm going to make turkey breast tomorrow. And how she just complicated it is, he said to me, well, depending on the weather, he said, if the weather's nice or it's not raining, he said, I want a rotisserie. I want to try my rotisserie. He, he got one, uh, I don't know, for Christmas or something from the kids that goes on the barbecue grill. Nice. And he hasn't used it. So in my mind, oh my goodness, what? There's a 50% chance that you can use it. I know, but the thing is, the turkey <laughs> breast takes a couple hours to cook in the oven, right? So in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm going to make a turkey breast, I'm going to throw it in the oven, I'm going to be done. And then he's like, well, I might want a rotisserie if it's not raining. So now, we are having turkey breast. Um, 
I guess it's going to be a last minute call what we do. Um, personally, I don't see how you can rotisserie a turkey breast because it's not uniform. Um, but I guess that's going to be his call. <laughs> but, and yeah. by, not, by not uniform, what do you mean? What does that mean? Well, like one end of the turkey breast is thicker than the other end. So is one going to cook fit one part going to cook faster than the other? I don't know. Got it. Got it. Um, all right. Well, you're going to have to update us. So, so one will get done today. One will get to done tomorrow. It's really the, uh, is the thinking, is that my, the way to conclude this or no? No, I only have one turkey breast. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, all right. Yeah. Update us tomorrow. I'm excited. So we're going to, tomorrow's feature will be what happened last night. Maria, and then what's what's on what's for dinner tonight? Okay, um, good, good. All right, so we are now on to the next round of questions, and so uh, I've got some creative people on here, and uh, Joe Joe alluded to this a little bit, but I, I tend to think of uh, creativity coming in a whole a host of forms. People are creative in their every like breath; they can be creative. It really the the medium doesn't matter so much as if you're capturing a creative spirit, and so. Uh, that said, I think people here, art inclined, um, are likely have a creative spirit within them that's, that may, may take on a, a larger form than most folks. And so I'm curious, what is the creative space that you like to go to most as a person? Um, you know, wh whether it's painting or taking uh, photos or something else that you do in your free time that is a little bit more of a creative bent. This can be something historically that you've done. Uh, to be creative or maybe something right now that you're digging into as a new hobby or whatever, but take it away. Uh, Beth, what about you? Um, uh, one class I really enjoyed was glass fusing. So we did some glass fusing pieces and, um, some melted glass pieces. So we made some vases, jewelry pieces, it was, it was a lot of fun. That was my favorite. So That's far. really cool. That's yeah. really cool. Thanks. Dave. Um, really my computer is, is, uh, you know, where I like to, to do a lot of my creative stuff because it, there's a lot of technology involved with what I do. Um, I, I spend my summers doing, doing video work and editing, um, for day camp and we do promotional stuff. I've cut commercials. Um, don't know if it's happening this year yet, so we'll see <laughs> <laughs> to be determined. Um, uh, but I've been doing that for, for a long time, for like 25 years with, with that, uh, with that camp. Um, but also I like to create, like one of my, my favorite things to do is, uh, is just be creative and do work around the house. I love to build. Um, I built my own fireplace and, uh, just, I like to renovate and do things to my house. So, um, that's, I love that stuff. That's cool. That's cool. I didn't know that about you. Um, you getting out on national bike ride day? Yes. I've been, we've been doing a lot of riding, uh, lately. So trying to hit a lot of different trails. So yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, Jen, what about you? Um, I have to say, ever since I came to the high school, um, I rediscovered my love for photography. Shocker. Um, so I've been doing a lot of photography every day when I go for a walk. I try to take new pictures. So as of now, on <laughs> Google Photo, I have a whole quarantine album going. I have like <laughs> over 200 pictures just from being off. Um, and then I share them with my students as well. So it kind of works hand in hand, which I love. Because I find it really relaxing to take photos, especially on okay. sunny days. Very cool. Uh, I can't get a, a handle on my like photos, my personal family photos. I can't imagine then throwing in artistic photos on that as well. Do so you have like <laughs> your iPhone photos of your family, and then you have like an, a separate way of taking photos artistically, or mm -hmm. is it like all in the same space? Yeah, right now on my phone, I have like twenty thousand photos, just all intertwined, and I. Periodically, I do share my fa my family photos with my students, depending on you know the topic, you know portraits yep. and stuff like that. So I do bring myself into the classroom also. <laughs> cool, that's beautiful. Um, good stuff, Joe. Go for it. I'm struggling with this one a bit because I I don't know if I have a lot of hobbies like that. I guess um, I guess this is kind of the creative space. This is kind of your fault. I like playing with Google Sheets now and learning new formulas and how to you know make things tabulate so i've been doing a lot of that lately uh other than that i do enjoy uh experimenting with cooking when i don't have the pressure of like of needing to 
like if I'm responsible for dinner, I feel a lot of pressure. But if I just I'm able to just kind of wing it and try new things, I tend to do a lot better. Um, I've done some good things, but I'm not not at Maria level yet. But I'm getting there. Cool. And if I could offer Joe, I think you're 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 you are a very deliberate person, and, and when I see that, I think the creativity kind of swelling in your head about how am I going to make this work and be as uh, efficient as possible, but have it land in people's hands in as positive way as possible. So I think there is a lot of creativity in that kind of thinking. Sounds Joe, a lot more elegant when you say it like that. So yes. <laughs> good. I'm glad elegance is uh, is what you're you're pining for. That's good. Joy. <laughs> So uh, I like to think that I'm a creative thinker and uh, find ways to get things done, um, especially if I'm told no or if we don't have the money to do something. Um, so I think that's one space where, um, you know, I'd like to figure things out and do things really out of the box. Um, I like to be creative in the kitchen where, you know, like we'll go to a restaurant, I'll taste a dish and then I'll figure out how to make that in my kitchen. Um, or I really like to be creative uh, outdoors in the garden. So a lot of different spaces. Beautiful. Beautiful. Christy. So I'm going to go with, I'm a creative thinker also. Uh, I haven't always been into the arts and, and, um, been able to because probably because my skills are lacking significantly but um when i was pregnant with joey which was 13 i think this was the most creative i ever was um i was home for six months and i made photo blankets for all of my kids and my grandparents and my mom um nice large photo blankets each child had their own photo blanket um you know all of the, their baby pictures it was waterproof and they can keep them as as keepsakes and at that point you know the stores didn't have fabric pre-cut so it was a very lengthy process i had to cut all the squares and sew them all together print the pictures figure out how to print the pictures so um it was pretty cool so my oldest two children have their photo quilts and joey's 13 and i'm still working on his so i don't have that much time for creativity so good is though cool yeah, I think, uh, you know, the, the kind of love we put into those types of things is, is certainly a source of creativity or a spot of creativity. Good stuff. Maria. Uh, honestly, I like to crochet. I, um, I, I mean, I don't make clothing and stuff like that. I do make like all my kids and their boyfriends or husbands, they all have scarves that I've made. Um, I did make, I did make all my kids. Uh, blankets before they went away to college. So it was kind of like a little member to home. They could put like this homemade crochet blanket on their bed. They do have ones now. Um, what I have been doing is on my husband's side of the family, there's, I have like 32 nieces and nephews. Um, my side of the family is not so big. There's like eight of them. Uh, I am making each time a child moves out. My nieces, nephews move out, get married. Um, I've been making them an afghan for either their home or their apartment. Um, kind of as like, you know, down the road, they'll have this thing that Aunt Maria made them. Um, when they have babies, I make baby blankets for all of them. And that's pretty much it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, really enjoyed hearing that. Megan. Uh, yeah, I, um, I have recently taken a class at Art League where I was uh, with a watercolor instructor who was teaching us how to paint the negative. So instead of painting the actual object or subject, you're painting around it. And from there, the object appears. So I've been kind of obsessed with that. It's all I've been doing. Um, flowers, um, buildings, landscapes. It's been kind of fun. Um, but also right before the quarantine sensation, I was getting into wood carving with my sculpture kids. And I actually am a little mad that all of my wood carving tools are there. Um, my dad has a ton of firewood that is just like calling my name and I have nothing to carve it with. So I really miss wood carving. I was getting into it. So watercolors though, for sure. That's, that's what I love. Okay, cool. Patty. Okay, so my uh, first passion is drawing. And um, <laughs> recently I've taken an oil uh, painting class, and which was very challenging. 
See my nice. oil painting. Nice. Um, thanks to the quarantine, I've gone back to sewing and making masks for friends and family. Beautiful. And um, Dave's going to help me with my new venture, which is uh, DJing, because he likes my uh, <laughs> headset here. He thinks I should start doing some DJ work. <laughs> Patty, I had a similar set that I was wearing for a little bit. Uh, the that other everybody one, said the same thing. They hurt my ears, the other I one. I hear you. I hear so you. I got to rotate. Yeah. Don't let Dave give you a hard time. No, he's going to help me out, he said. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> With the DJ. That's good. Yeah. She, she likes a freestyle, is what she was telling us earlier. <laughs> he's going to work on his break dancing to go with it, so that way they kind of have a That's whole duo. <laughs> That's good, guys. It's the financial thinking on this is really sound because there's a lot of gigs out there right now where you yeah. guys could, uh, you know, really, really hit the market pretty well. That's good. <laughs> you can do it virtual. You can do it right from home. Yeah. And broadcast it in your your own living room. That'd be cool. That okay. sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> that's the, um, that's going to be the first episode of Hotbox Got Talent. <laughs> hey, Dave, are you ready to give a plug or what? Uh, yeah, we can plug it. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, we're working on the forum now. So um, we're planning on doing a, um, with my broadcasting students, we were talking about doing a little uh, production of putting together, like highlighting the talent of Hop Hog. So um, we're going to be asking for students, or it could be faculty too, Patty, you could join in, um, to do, um, to record yourself doing something, whether it be um, a song or a magic trick or any type of performance. Um, and we're going to put together little mini shows and uh, and try and pump them out. Hopefully, hopefully once a week. I think we're going to try. Originally, we're going to try and do one long one, um, but we're going to try and do some short ones. And uh, that's awesome. So we could see some people. So I mean, I'm really excited about Stay that. Tuned. Is there what is the is there like a time limit? Because if Patty was DJing, I wouldn't want our whole set as the sample of what she's doing. Like, is there some are there some guidelines? Um, you know, the guidelines are. Um, we, we really don't have any. <laughs> um, you know, the one thing I'm pushing is that, you know, if you're going to do something with somebody, make sure that um, you're doing it online. So we don't want people to get together to do this. So keeping um, that in mind. Um, but there's some pretty creative things that people are doing together online. So, um, or if it's a family member, that's fine. You could have them play in the background or, or do something. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, each performance, if we get, it depends on how much we get. Um, but if you can keep them to like, you know, three or four minutes each, that would probably be good or cool. less. If it's a, a magic trick or something that you want to share or a skill that you do, um, it could be shorter. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I'm super excited about it. Uh, and looking forward to the messaging. Joe has mentioned that he's probably going to jump on and play his guitar. So I'm excited. About that. Oh, fantastic. That's good news. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> I need uh, to get a first. What's that? I need a guitar first. Um, Okay, yeah. we'll see what we can do there. That's good. That's a good I, I actually have a guitar. We'll mail it over. That's good. <laughs> uh, Joe, James has a new trick, it looked like. Did he say, did he wave hello? Yeah, I thought he, I saw him. He did. He does a lot of stuff now. He, but it, it's hit or miss, but he, he knows how to wave now. You want to wave? Say hi to Chris. Say James, hello. what's up, buddy? Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, guys, let's do a quick, very quick shout out to finish it off. You get to shout out anybody in your life, personally, as a group. There you go, James. Oh, we missed it. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it's hard to manage this back and forth screen thing. Um, go for it. Do a quick shout out. Anybody in your life or anybody extended. Uh, Beth, start us off. Uh, shout out to my daughter, Shelby, and my niece, Jessica, both nursing uh Six days a week, seven days a week, uh, nonstop. So shout out to them. Yeah, shout out to them. That's awesome, Beth. Thank you. Dave. Uh, I'm going to do a shout out right now to my TV2 students because we just finished uh, some projects that we did and uh, we're, we're, we're posting them now. And they, they created little um, demonstration videos at home. And I'm really proud of them. And um, great job. Good to see your faces on the videos. Cool. Jen. Uh, shout out to my students. Um, thank you for showing up. And also my sister-in-law, she's a, a nurse um, at Southside. She's in the COVID ICU area. So yeah, so shout out to her as well. Thanks. Big time, Joe. Uh, so my shout out today will be to all seniors. I'm wearing the shirt today for you. Actually, 
there's a friend's connection. I just realized, Patty. Um, yes, there is. Purpose. Um, I know this is tough, but you know we're all going to get through it, and uh, we're going to try and do some good things for you. But reach out to us if you guys have any ideas or need anything. Joy. I want to shout out to all of the AP students who are getting ready to take their exams uh, next week. Good luck. You got this. Mm -hmm. And uh, stay the course. Christy. Morning. I'm going to give a shout out to our school nurses today. Um, we appreciate everything that you do for our kids. Maria. Yeah, I'm going to give a shout out to my cousin-in-law, Susan, um, a nurse. Um, did come down with the virus and should be released from the hospital today or tomorrow. She's doing well. Awesome. That is huge. That is huge. Megan. Uh, shout out to all my students. Uh, I miss all of you guys a lot. Um, and a special shout out to cartooning. They started their comic stripping. So that's cool. They're creating comic strips now. So I'm really excited to see those. So shout out to all my students. Great. And Patty. Uh, my first shout out is to IB2, the seniors. They completed their assessments. Congratulations. And my second shout out is to IB1, who we meet basically every week. And they make me laugh. And they're just a great group of kids. And I uh, miss all of them, all my classes. So, Yep, yep. All right, beautiful stuff, guys. Really well done today. Thank you so much for jumping on. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Peace out, everybody. Have a great day. Peace. Bye. Bye. Be safe. Bye. Be safe, everybody. Bye bye. 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 Can you say bye? Streaming is stopped. There it is. There, oh, hold on. I'll go back to you, Joe. Finish it off. <laughs> yeah. You got to speak a little bit so we get the camera. Say, hello. You. say bye. Bye bye. <laughs> He's on the spot. All right. Bye. Whenever he does something cool and we start recording,